My name is uh, Ariel Noy. Together with me is uh, uh, David Goldberg. Uh, we are from uh, HP CSB Context Stream. Um, and uh, I'm the CTO, and David is the uh, one of the team leader. Uh, David, uh, also the uni manager, uh, PTL, right? Yeah. So uh, we are going to show you uh, and are going to speak about generalization of the OpenStax model of uh, for implementing Layer Two VPN MEF compliance VPN service. Um, what we did in this uh, uh, release of Open Daylight uh, in Boron is taking the MEF uh, API and translate them into NetVirt API. Okay? So you have ability to have layer two uh, VPN service uh, running over a NetVirt model. Okay? And so there is work that been done in in the open data community to have a MEF compliance API uh, in the release. And there are two different implementation. One is uh, our implementation is just to translate that to a network model and having an open flow switch support that uh, uh, model. And the second implementation is having that configured with the uh, uh, netconf to uh, Cisco switches, right? That's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that's the other implementation uh, that uh, they did. So, uh, <clears throat> you wanna say? Okay. So, uh, we call it as an ODL-based uh, SDVPN. Uh, it's more like the SD1 that you are familiar with, uh, but we see it's more as a as SD VPN um, because of it, SD1 started as a, a better uplink, but we see that as an opportunity to have a, more than just a, a better uplink, but to have your VPN servicing running on every um, every network in between and also enabling additional capabilities into a uh, private clouds, public clouds, uh, <clears throat> and having those uh, uh, services in, uh, in between. Uh, the API that uh, we choose uh, is a MEF-based API to be more uh, standard, a layer two and layer three VPN service, a regular deluxe-based uh, uh, VPN administration, and the connectivity can happen from a, a branch office connectivity a, or a branch to branch, a branch to cloud. So a branch can be just a small office that you have it as a home office or you have it a, like a, a couple of subscribers, a, a couple of a employee in an in a, in office, but a branch can be also your a <clears throat> centralized headquarter or something like that. Now, we see the communication happening between different locations, okay, from the branch to the other branch, and then having direct path between them. You don't need to go to a central place and go to the, uh, between them. Or you can enable that. So ELAN and E3 models, if you're familiar with the math models, both are being uh, supported. And ELAN enables you directly branch to branch connectivity. Now, the uniqueness of the solution once we use the NetField model is the fact that you can have the branch office connected directly into your OpenStack networking in your tenant, okay? So you can have a tenant in the a edge computing area or your local data centers, you have a tenant that you allocate for this enterprise, okay? And your, the CPE devices, okay, of that branch, not only they have VPN between them, running on every whatever underlay, but they can directly connect into the OpenStack network of their tenant. 
without going into additional IP nothing, IP allocation, all those problems. So it's the same way as I sit in the office and the next server is running on the same line as I am. Now that server's in running in OpenStack and maybe in the telco cloud, okay? And I'm not noticing the fact that somebody put it away and I can use the same IP range in the same layer two or layer three network that I have and I don't need tons of translation in between IP allocation, public IP allocation, and bunch of complexity that you previously needed. And I don't need MPLS network in between. I don't need 24-7, all kinds of uh, application and, uh, and complexity in between, okay? Because I just have a simple VXLAN network in between and you can use any type of network. Um, <clears throat> of course, that also can happen between different data centers. Uh, part of, um, we have another session that we demonstrate today, and you can see the demo in our booth is having multiple OpenStack and sharing the same network. So we truly allow ubiquitous networks between different OpenStacks, and not just you have a branch to branch, but you can have a cloud to cloud. So we, we looking as clouds of clouds, that will be the next wave, okay? People will have not just their cloud computing, but they have multiple clouds. And you need networking between clouds of clouds to have sharing the same networks. <clears throat> so, a, that cloud of clouds, I have that traffic that's running from, uh, I have to, I usually, okay, no mice. So, I have the traffic from the left side running from the branch office connected to the data center and in between data centers, open stack and have it to the other side. And I can have multiple branches in each branch with its own edge computing. So once we go to mobile edge computing, augmented realities, those are bandwidth consumption and those needs are um, local computer resources. We all saw uh, what happens in the world a month ago, okay? The new application came into the space, right? And suddenly everybody goes with their iPhone and Android and like that in the streets, okay? You know which application? Pokemon, yeah? It's augmented reality. That's break anything else, okay? In a month, they, like billions of billions of dollars suddenly goes into that space, okay? Because everybody was introduced to that augmented reality. Now, think about it, that augmented reality will have additional capabilities that resources are really next to the edge, okay? So you will need those edge cloud computing and you will be able to approach that directly and not that over the top. You saw that a single application which was designed to a low rate, okay, exploded in a very few weeks, and all the time, everybody complains that they don't have that service, okay? And honestly, my kids went in the middle of the night in order to get the, the right Pokemons in the right places, okay? Because it was a uniqueness, and that will happen more and more when a new application will consume that uh, bandwidth. <clears throat> uh, can you hear me? No. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So when we came to start developing this project, we realized we were in an open source environment, so we don't need to do everything ourselves. We wanted to find and see which other projects we can use to help us uh, write some of the code or create some of the functionalities. So when we looked around in the projects in the ODL, we saw that NetVirt, which was created to support uh, OpenStack connectivity and networks, 
as a pretty generic interface which we can use also for our networks. So we wanted to create a MEF interface. So if you want to work with orchestrations which support MEF compliant APIs, so you'll be able to use our solution. But that doesn't mean that our southbound has to have something special which is something MEF like. So we decided we want to use a NetVirt. So if you can see, in the OpenStack scenario, you have the OpenStack Neutron calling the REST API of Neutron Northbound, which then translates into a NetVirt API, which has the logic to create the OpenFlow rules and obvious DB configuration so that the networking will work. So we wanted to do the same thing, but MEF-based. So we export a MEF REST API, and we also have a deluxe-based portal which we can use to create, to create those networks. And then we translate it into the same objects the OpenStack uses, the same NetVirt objects, which will then translate into the OpenFlow rules and the obvious DB configuration. So at the south point, we have the same thing, but we support different APIs. So other applications can also e export other APIs and use the same capabilities that NetVirt created. And we had it to add additional, for example, ELAN, okay? That's something that uh, OpenStack do not have, uh, uh, E3, sorry. Yeah. E3 is not a, a topology that OpenStack uh, uh, support, so we had to uh, uh, contribute that into NetVirt, and now NetVirt has E3 capability. Uh, ELAN, obviously, it was supported. Yeah. So if you look at the NetVirt model, you can see it's a pretty general model of networking. So we have the same thing with the MEF model. We have the network, which in uh, NetVirt, it's the ELAN instance, and in our MEF model, it's a MEF service. This young was defined by MEF. We just took it and implemented it in open daylight. And we translated it, each model from the MEF model to the NetVirt model. And then NetVirt implementation created all the network capabilities we needed. So it really shows that it's a simple, very easy translating, translation between MEF to NetVirt, okay? It's not a lot of work, and you can expose a single model behind, the, you have a single model behind the scene, but you can expose it to multiple uh, stuff, and even in parallel, okay? What the previous slide show is like, in parallel, it's exposed to the OpenStack, but also it exposed to a Northbound application, and you can, by the federation, you can connect the two. So instead of having to implement all of the network capabilities, we just had a thin application which translates the API we want to export, in our case, the MEF API, and translate it into NetVirt's API, which then creates all of the networking. So we started with uh, the MEF API, the MEF Layer 2 API. Um, which has the three kinds of, of services. There's E-Line, which is a point-to-point -point service, which just connects two network ports to each other. Everything that goes into one port will just go out from the other port. The second model is E-Lan, which is a regular network, a regular layer two network, um, with one broadcast group and Mac learning and just a regular switch. The third type, E3, is something we have in MEF, but it's not a regular network. It's a network where you can have roots, roots and leaves. Um, the leaves can't speak between themselves. They can only speak to roots. And the roots can talk with everyone. So this is something which is not a regular model. So NetVirt, like Ariel mentioned, didn't have it implemented. But since it's an open source, we just implemented it in NetVirt, and they allowed us to add this capability. So in each service, you can have, you have the MEF attributes. We just took it from the same young, which MEF created. You have the EVC type, which we saw the three types. For each type, you can decide if it's VLAN-based or port-based. Um, you have the bundling option, if it's all-in-one, or, or if you take the whole port or have per VLAN have a different service. The number of links, links that are allowed per UNI so basically, all of the MEF API, we can export it and then use the network capabilities to create the networking to support it. Uh, 
Yeah, the, so the fact that we, you have any network in between, you have a connection between the CPE box, okay, and the vSwitch, okay? You can have any network in between. And you don't need any more the MPLS network. Um, you have a direct connection between them. It's running on a, as an overlay. Um, you have the statistics from the OVS for every tunnel. So you know exactly how much you send on each tunnel and how much was received on the other end, okay? So you can extract that information and if you give you a better SLA visibility on that network. We are monitoring, do monitoring those tunnels with the BFD and also we have visibility when it's available, how much is available, and what's the uh, reliability of that. We're adding in the carbon capabilities of having multiple uplinks and then load showing those uh, uplinks. So you will have that uh, uh, additional capabilities uh, <clears throat> of multiple uh, location. From a, a data center connectivity, so instead of having the NAT connection between, lo between location with uh, a VM to VM, uh, without ODL, it's running for OpenStack stuff that on layer three you have, you're going through the Q router when it's a DVR, when it's not DVR, you go to, uh, to uh, the network node, do a NAT, and goes to the other side. That's really a horrible performance, tons of translations, very hard to work with, okay? With ODL and the federation capabilities and getting that into the CPE devices, the traffic goes to the vSwitch, the other vSwitch on the other side, and goes to the v VM. Layer two and layer three happen the same, okay? The translation happen in the vSwitch and goes to the other side. So you, have, you can have full wire speed performance depending on uh, your OVS, whether that's an OVS TPDK, you can have five million packets per second per core, or it's uh, just a regular uh, OVS. We, you, see, you will see in a minute that we brought over here uh, CPE devices. So this is a small CPE device. It's actually a server running an Atom, two cores, very low end server that can stay everywhere and can be very, very cheap running just an OVS. And we can make that as a CPE devices that running an OVS and you will see the performance of it, okay? So two cores, you cannot have an even OVS DPDK on Atom, but you have a reasonable performance for a low-end CPE. If you have high-end CPE, uh, then uh, you can have a better performance. Or some CPEs are dedicated CPEs, ones that are not running x86 and have <clears throat> can also be cheap and uh, high quality. From a traffic perspective, so we'll do some uh, testing branch to branch. Uh, you will see iperf traffic and it will be running directly from branch to branch over, we have a local uh, one gig uh, switch over here. Also, very, very cheap one, less than uh, $20. <laughs> and and you, you will also see capabilities of, we have on one of those laptops, uh, we have DevStack running on that uh, laptop with an OVS on that DevStack and a VM. Uh, we have the 40 gig? Mm -hmm. We have a 40 gate VMs that is service chain into that chain, and that's like your central location, having that's your uh, firewall, your private firewalls to the internet, okay? So it's not just allow you connectivity into your tenant, okay? And having ability to go to, into that tenant and run all kinds of computer resources in that tenant, but also ability to have um, you can define your own service chain over there or firewall 
that will go uh, forward to the, to the internet. And <clears throat> so, or you can go whatever direct connection to the internet, clouds, and all of that. Um, so you should say that stop by a booth. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over the demo. A bit of a disclaimer, as you can see, it's a physical demo, and we just moved it before the session, so we didn't really have time to check it. And I'm not sure the demo uh, survived this transportation, but if it won't work, you'll be able to come and see it by the booth. You didn't tell me before. <laughs> Okay, so let's try and see the demo. Okay, so now we will try to configure these uh, devices and check the connectivity. So what we have is two EL10s, which are the CPEs we are using. Each one of them will probably be, be in a client's uh, branch. We have two pieces. One of them will act as a data center. It has OpenStack installed in it and uh, the firewall. The other one will act as a client. It will have a few VMs on it. Uh, some VMs will be on the first site, and one VM will be on the second site. And we're trying to demonstrate the three types of connectivities we showed you. So we will start from the branch to branch connectivity. As you can see, this portal is uh, deluxe based. This is the network operation, operational uh, portal. You can see all of the tenants in there, which are on these networks. You can see the devices. You can see the data center OpenStack device and the two EL, EL devices. Uh, you can see all of the UNI ports and all of the networks which currently exist. These are the networks which were created already in, the, in OpenStack. So the, the OpenStack part, we did the regular OpenStack. And it's a regular connection of ODL to OpenStack. What David is showing is in addition to OpenStack, I want a CPE devices to connect to those networks, and then he can show you that those networks are a, a model into the same way. Okay, so these are networks which were created using OpenStack, and because we're using the same uh, mechanism, the same network to create our connectivity, we can use these networks also without OpenStack. So first we'll start with uh, the branch-to-branch -branch connectivity. So let's create a tenant, some customer which wants to use our service. Then the network operator which wants to, wants to decide which CP is a part of this customer. So we can, assign, we can assign the tenant to both of these customers. And now we will go to the customer's view. Once you go in, inside to the tenant, uh, you can see the view the customer will get. He will be able to create all of the networks he wants using his devices. So first we want to create a simple point-to-point -point between two VMs, which represent two different computers on the two sites which this tenant has. So we create a MAFI VC, Ethernet Virtual Circuit. We want to choose Ethernet Virtual PL point-to-point. -point. And now we want to add some uh, UNIs to this network. So first, obviously if you have a MEF API orchestration, then they can push that information directly. So first I'm adding one port from one of the branches, branch connected to EL2. Um, and now we'll add the other port, which is connected to EL1, which is managed in a VLAN based instead of port based. So we need to specify in which VLAN we want to use this service. In our case, VLAN 112. And this creates a service. Now we want to check the connectivity between it. So we just have a VMs running as a client on the other laptops and connected with the cables to those uh, different CPE devices. So we have two CPE devices. Didn't survive. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It looks like the the client being the inspector. You can yeah, start it. Yeah, always start it. Always down. Yeah. So that's the client VM. Obviously, people moves are surviving move. <laughs> VM's not. <laughs> okay, we'll configure the next uh, set of connectivities and then come back to this one. But obviously, the other ones are also dead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's there, but you don't see anything. Yeah, I'll try to restart the virtual manager. Okay, so I'll try to configure the connection to OpenStack, and then we can show the same thing but from the OpenStack. So let's say our client also has a data center, and he wants to connect the data center to his uh, networks. So the network operator will connect also the OpenStack to the same tenant. And now when you go into the tenant view, you can see also all of the networks which were connected which were created in OpenStack. So for example, we have the Connet, which if you look at the OpenStack, has one uh, VM connected to it. So we want to take this network, another, another port, from one of the CPUs to connect to it. So like we did before, we just choose the device. In our case, it will be L1. Choose the correct UNI and add the VLAN. And now we have a network which was created in OpenStack, but has not only OpenStack VMs, but also physical computers or any other VMs which are in the branch of this tenant. Um, let's try and check it through the OpenStack API. Okay, any question? Sorry about that. Uh, didn't. Uh, yeah. Kind of missing the question. In that the CPU device, we mean that a different CPU, you know, the keys on another thing to be available. Uh, but that's also possible because the ODL, the Newton plugins, support that. Okay? And with the federation that we just demonstrated previously, that's actually been the viable solution. Because you can have the, the kind of difficulties of that model is the scale. Okay? OpenStack today doesn't scale to hundreds of thousands of CPEs like we need, okay? But the fact that you can have multiple OpenStacks and you have the federation in between, then you can have that uh, logic, okay? So that's a neighbor for that, but it's a different model. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you.